this is one of my favorite times in the life of the church. Part of our purpose, part of our calling as people of Christ are to make disciples for Jesus Christ. What greater time, what more perfect time in the life of the church where we get to come together and help other people become disciples for Christ than confirmation. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Absolutely. Throughout this past year, we've had four youth from the church join confirmation. They've gathered with teachers on Sunday morning to go through the curriculum. They chose their own mentors who walked with them and talked with them and prayed with them uh, and answered questions about the faith to guide them into this time to help them make a decision for themselves as to what they believe. They had ex-cons, their uh, youth peer mentors that stood with them and guided them through the process because they once were exactly where they are now and helped them to make a decision about their faith. They went on a retreat where they really got to dig in even deeper and finally come to a decision about whether they chose to believe or not. And because of the decisions that they made, they are here today. Family of Christ. This is our job. This is our duty. This is what we are about. We surround them with love and prayer and guide them and nurture them so that they come into a decision about what it is that they believe. So your prayers and your support over this past year have really done so much to go into the decisions that they've made. And I ask, that you continue those prayers and that nurture and that support because how many of us can go through faith alone? How many of us can go through the trials and struggles alone? How many of us find that when we try and do things by ourselves, we fail, correct? So they can't do it by themselves either, nor should we expect them to. So after today, I ask that you receive them as full members, as full disciples in the church. Nurture them, pray for them, guide them, and help them live into everything that God is calling them to be. So this is our time, and this is our time in the service where we get to celebrate all that they've done and all that they are deciding and hear from them what has changed in their lives and what they're looking forward to. So with that said, I would like to invite our confirmands, their mentors, and their ex-cons to take their place up here. <laughs> okay. So mentors, you get to go first. After conference. Do you, the mentors of the confirmands, affirm the faithfulness and readiness of your confirmand to enter into active membership and service in the full body of Christ? Excellent. So now I'm going to give an opportunity for each of the mentors to share just a personal note uh, about their confirmand and why they feel they are ready. So Nancy, I'll let you go first. I've had the honor of being um, Chelsea Abigail Elliott's um, mentor. I've known Chelsea since the moment she was born and she took her first <laughs> breath. Uh, I believe she is ready to make this commitment and is ready to share her faith. I'm Corey Bardoff. I got the chance to be Will's mentor. Uh, it's been amazing over the past year getting to know him a little bit more, uh, just seeing his faith grow and how much I can tell he's been listening to his father every chance that he can. <laughs> I'm Kelsey. I had the honor to be Molly's mentor over the past year. Um, a wonderful girl, full of a light that shines in whatever she does. 
uh, maturity beyond mine sometimes, <laughs> and of course a little bit of sass. Um, <laughs> but through all of our conversations, uh, it is very evident she's ready for this journey. I think Kelsey taught her the sass. I don't know, just saying. Um, I had the honor and the privilege of being able to be Sujay's uh, mentor for confirmation this year. Uh, he was my third Vujla for uh, being mentor for confirmation. And uh, I too have known Sujay since he was a little babe in arms and had been able to watch him grow in faith and maturity. Um, and um, it's, I've seen him running around and playing and throwing balls and doing all sorts of goofy stuff and then this year hit. And I watched a maturity of faith grow in him that is amazing. And I watched him be able to boldly make a decision about what it is uh, that he believes. And it has been my honor and privilege to watch uh, God grow in him so much. And then uh, a couple weeks ago, being able to go to Lock Raven Reservoir and participate in his baptism, which we all got to participate with, and watch him be lowered into the water and come out. Uh, and even though he said, it's cold, he also shined a little bit. <laughs> he shined a lot. Uh, so the Holy Spirit was present and is working in him. And it's my honor and privilege to have been his mentor and to present him to all of you for confirmation today. So, in addition to our testimony, uh, we also wanted to hear from the confirmands about what it is that's uh, new for them in their faith, and they were given a question uh, to be able to share with each of you their testimony of what confirmation means for them. So, just so you know, their question was, how is your faith different today than when you started confirmation? So, they're going to share that, and we'll go in reverse order. So, we'll start with Sujay. Well, my faith has changed a lot, but at the beginning of confirmation, I wasn't really sure about everything. But once I got baptized, everything really, like, changed. It was as if I was blind, but then I could finally see. Then I finally could see what the world was like. It was then I, now, I, now, I, I knew that I, was ready, um, that I was ready. Faith has been a really big part of my family's life, but now it's going to be an even bigger part in my life. What I wonder sometimes is how my faith has changed other people around me. In the beginning of confirmation, I don't think I realized how much I would learn and get out of this experience. I don't even think I fully knew what it would mean for my faith. Learning about not only what it means to be a Christian, what that meant for me was such a moving experience. Confirmation was also a time where I could learn where my faith came from and its history. Figuring out what I believe and then understanding where that came from is something I'm so glad I got the chance to do. Before I make decisions, I like to understand my options and understand where they came from, and that's exactly what I got to do here. Going through confirmation at the time I did was just another reason why it was so meaningful to me. I got the chance to go to Rock this year for the first time, and I had so much fun. The speaker we had was amazing, and I loved everything about it. I can tell that my faith has changed, not only into something that I believe, but something that truly defines me. My grandfather died about two and a half years ago, and that was the most, that was the whole, that whole experience was the hardest thing I've had to go through. Having God there was so reassuring, it helped me to get through that. That's why, not, that's why being able to stand here and confirm my faith in front of everyone is something I really want to do and something I will never forget. Let me tell you why I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus because when I look at the stories on YouTube, and one that really caught me was when the, this truck driver that was working on his, the bottom of his tractor trailer, and he had his jack to hold up his several ton tractor trailer, and the jack collapsed and the tractor trailer fell on his chest. And it caved in on the guy's chest and it took his life. And what really hit me about the story was when two angels came down and took his soul up to heaven and saw God, and God gave him the choice to stay in heaven or go back down to earth. And he said that he wanted to go back down to earth, and he gave him that choice. And he sent him down, down to earth, and the paramedics came and took him to the hospital. And he lay there on the hospital bed, and the pastor of his church came and blessed him that his chest would feel better. And right there, he could feel his chest healing. 
This story had such big impact on me, and, and it tells me that God has never-ending never ending love on all of us, and he always is there for us. And this story tells... Oh, oops. And this story tells us that God can do and tells us what God can do. And some people think that people make up these stories so that they can get money. But in John chapter 20, verse 29, God says to Thomas, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. When I started confirmation, I wasn't strong in my faith. I also didn't realize that it would be a way to bond with my grandmother and other confirmants. I went into confirmation because I knew it's what my family would want, but then I soon realized it was something that I wanted to do just as much as everyone else wanted me to do it. I went into confirmation not expecting all the support and all the love I would get throughout it. I had a feeling I would be confused due to the fact of going to a school that teaches a different religion than the one I was learning at church. I always enjoyed going to church, but never really had the chance before confirmation. Then in the middle of confirmation, I ended up breaking my arm, which made it a little harder to catch up, and at the same time, it was a good way to know that the church community actually cares about me. I found out that God loves you no matter who you are and what has happened. I also know that my faith has grown a lot stronger this year and will continue to grow stronger as the years go on. Well done. Ah, wow. Good stuff. (laughs) Beloved church, based on your hearing of the testimony shared with you this morning by the mentors and the confirmands, are you confident in their readiness to be confirmed on this day? We are. Awesome. All right. So this is a time where they get to answer uh, specific questions about their faith. Uh, So we will enter into this time now. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. Sujay remembers that. (laughs) Acknowledge what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. I present, bless you, I present proudly and thankfully and with a full heart this confirmation class. Chelsea Abigail Elliott, William Daniel Sharp, Molly Cannon Steiner, Sue J. Benjamin Vuchula for confirmation. And as another of your pastors, it is my great honor um, on behalf of the whole church to ask you these historic questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? And do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with us, with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? And as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Because we need it. Are you sure? (laughs) Okay. And as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in our ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Mentors and ex-cons, will you who mentor these confirmands continue to support and encourage them in their Christian faith? I will. Congregation, 
Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Members of the household of faith, I commend to your love and care these confirmands, whom we this day recognize as members of the family of God. Will you endeavor so to live that these youth may grow in the knowledge and love of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ? With God's, God's help, help, we will, we will proclaim, proclaim the good news and live, and live according, according to the example of Christ. Christ. We will surround these confirmands with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Beloved, you have this written out, this covenant that you've just read in your bulletin. I ask that you take it with you and you read it over and you pray over it. It's one of the greatest things that we have as a church. We say this in baptism, we say this in confirmation, but this is our marching orders that God has given to us. It is our job to surround them, to pray for them, to nurture them in faith. Let us not take it lightly. Let us not, let it not be just words on a page, but let it be something that we do with a full heart and a loving heart to help others come into faith in Christ in bold ways. So one of the things that uh, we get to do each year too uh, during the confirmation retreat, the kids have a what they believe form. In other words, they put together their beliefs or their creed. Each of them writes it out individually and then they give it to me. And I take it and I put them all together and come up with a class creed. Everything that you will see in this creed and that we will read together are their words. So as you go through it, listen for the faith that this group of young people have taken on. It's a beautiful, beautiful creed. So will you join together with me in, in reading the creed that has been put together by the 2017 Confirmation Class? We believe that God is higher than any other. God created the universe, the world, us, and everything. He took the time to create us individually and loves us all. We believe that God sent Jesus to save us all. We believe that Jesus is such an amazing creation. Jesus is the only Son of God and, and is, is the, the savior, savior of all. All, all of the things he did and all of the things he will do continue to touch our lives. We believe that Jesus did die on a cross and that Jesus took all of our sins and that he will come back one day. We believe that the Holy Spirit is something that we feel, something that when its presence is here, gives us chills up our spines. The Holy Spirit will always be with us. We believe that the Holy Spirit is the breath of God and is there when we need protection and guidance. We believe that worship is one of the most important aspects of the church. During worship, the pastor speaks God's word to all of us and helps us to feel closer to God. When we sing together in worship, we believe it's another way for us to be able to verbalize and spread the word of God. We believe that the church is God's holy place where he teaches us. It is the house of God, but it is also the people of God standing together as community. We believe the church is where we are welcome and a place for us to be with God. The church is a good place to be a disciple. We believe that our faith is something special to us and that we can continue to grow with God and better our relationship with him. Our faith gets stronger every time we learn about him. We believe that our faith will lead us through all the tough times in our lives. Amen. Uh, 
in the coming year, we're celebrating our history. And as you leave today, if you go down the hallway near the church office, we have posted the class creeds from uh, many of our past confirmation classes going all the way back to Kelsey's confirmation class. Uh, so if you'd like to see some of the other class creeds, I invite you to take a look at those. But this one, very special. So thank you. Um, in a moment, I'll be inviting you to join us in our hymn of reflection, which is hymn number 539, O Spirit of the Living God. During this hymn, I invite parents to come up and join their confirmands around the prayer rail. So with that said, if you would rise and join us in our hymn of reflection. you please be seated? I'd also like to invite the confirmation teachers to come up. And if I could invite the confirmands to kneel. This is our time as a congregation where we get to bless you uh, for this confirmation decision that you have made. So as part of the covenant with the chosen people, God promised to them a land flowing with milk and honey, full of the abundance of God's blessing and grace. As people chosen by God, we invite you to taste and see that the Lord is good by partaking of the milk and honey, a sign of God's promise for you of a life full of blessing and grace. Confirmands, you'll notice in front of you there are three cups. One of them has white stuff in it. That's milk and honey. Please partake. Tastes sweet? No, don't drink that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's oil. Won't taste good. Um, <laughs> so... Know that taste and know that God invites you into his land, his promised land, flowing with milk and honey, that that is a promise for you, that God invites you in. Oil, 
has been an important, part, an important symbol in both our heritage and the Hebrew faith and in the practices of the Christian church. In the Hebrew faith, oil was used to anoint Aaron and his sons as priests and David as king. This was a sign of blessing and a seal of God's favor and commissioning of them for service in the community. In the early church and some churches today, oil is used as a sign of the anointing of the Holy Spirit experienced by Christ after his baptism in the Jordan. As we pray over each of you, we will bless you with oil as a sign of the anointing of the Holy Spirit that recognizes you and claims you as a child of God. We will also be clothing you with a stole and cross, which symbolizes that you are loved, called, and claimed by God. On the altar in front of each of the confirmands, they received uh, at the retreat a very plain box. Um, and this was, it has their picture on it, which is very cool. Uh, and this was symbolizing where they were in their faith and what they were choosing to fill themselves with. Since then, the boxes have been stained and sanded and made pretty and beautiful, showing the transformation that they've taken place, that's taken place in them as well. Uh, the stole is something that they made, and I encourage each of you uh, after the service to make it a point to go to the confirmands, look at their stoles and ask them about it because their confirmand tell, their, their stole tells the story of their faith and their faith process. Um, and each of the crosses that they receive are a gift from their mentors and it's stained glass with their initial in the middle and on the back it says, I have called you by your name, you are mine, uh, from Isaiah. So uh, please... Enjoy these gifts, but also congregation, make it a point to take a look and celebrate uh, what you as a body have done to gift them for this day. Chelsea Abigail Elliott, may the Holy Spirit fill you with power and with life, and may you be a faithful disciple with the church and a prophetic witness to the church until Christ shall return and dwell in all creation and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. And I invite the congregation as we're sharing blessing, all of us up here are laying hands. If you would like to extend a hand and be a part of the blessing as well, we invite you to do that with us. Thank you. Will, I anoint you as a sign of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From one who is yoked in Christ to another. William Daniel Sharp, may the Holy Spirit fill you with power and with life, that you might be a faithful disciple with the church and a prophetic witness to the church until Christ returns and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. with oil as a sign of the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. From one who is yoked to another. Yeah. 
Molly Cannon Steiner. May the Holy Spirit fill you with power and with life that you might be a faithful disciple with the church and a prophetic witness to the church until Christ returns and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So Jay, I anoint you with oil as a sign of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. From one who is yoked to another. Suje Benjamin Vruchula, may the Holy Spirit fill you with power and with life, that you might be a faithful disciple with the church and a prophetic witness to the church until Christ returns and God's will is done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. If I could invite the confirmants to please stand up and face the congregation. Oh, sorry. Sujay gets his moment too. I was too fast. All right. Congregation, please join me in welcoming our newest disciples of Epworth United Methodist Church, Chelsea Abigail Elliott, William Daniel Sharp, Molly Cannon Steiner, and Sujay Benjamin Vuchula. <laughs> Woo! 